Today we are painting Narthrax from the Reaper Bones line. Yes, I double checked. I got the name right this time, Narthrax. So as before, to save a little time and to speed up the process, we're beginning in the airbrush booth, uh, starting off with a mix of Vallejo model color deep green mixed with about equal amounts of Vallejo model color emerald. Next we begin the highlighting starting off with a very rough dry brush mix of deep green mixed with some Vallejo model color flat yellow and this is just kind of to establish the highlights. Uh, we'll be going back and increasing those uh, on the next step, but uh, just this rough dry brush with a uh, large brush helps to, you know, get things started going in the right direction. Then for the next highlight, it's a mix of deep green with Vallejo game color Scorpy green, and because the scales on this dragon are fairly large, uh, at least compared to the uh, cinder dragon we did last week or the week before. Uh, I'm hand painting in all the highlights of the scales. This is a, a very time-consuming process and it's not uh, it's not something you have to do all in one sitting. I think I did this in about three sittings just trying to get everything filled in and it did take a long time. And then the next highlight is pure Scorpy green and applying that to the larger scales, any areas that need an additional highlight. Now here's where things get a little weird. Um, I wasn't too happy with the colors that I chose. I wanted to go a bit lighter than what I had. so. I took it back to the airbrush booth with plans of starting from scratch, starting all over again, and I tried some Badger Minotaur Envy Green color airbrushed all over it. Uh, however, I wasn't aware the Envy Green is actually fairly transparent and didn't completely cover uh, the previous paint that I already did. What it did do, however, is leave an incredible emerald uh, color, transparent color, over the entire miniature which I really like. Was, you can see it's very beautiful, uh, bright, vibrant green now. So we I don't have that video recorded because I wasn't planning on uh, you know, showing that part uh, since it was a mistake. Uh, but we're going to go ahead with this color and try to turn this mistake into something that we can actually work off of. So this step we're doing right now is actually applying a wash. This is a wash of black and blue Vallejo inks. Now. If you're wondering why blue, uh, I, I initially intended to put work more blue into the green, but I never actually followed completely through that. But um, adding additional colors into something like this, like with the uh, the uh, the red dragon that I did, I believe I worked purples into that, and for the green, I wanted to work in some blues. But uh, that's the the reason for the blue addition. Usually when making videos, I like to start and completely finish before moving on to another area on the miniature, which makes it uh, easier to follow, I think, for the viewers. However, when actually painting without the camera, I jump around. Uh, this is a case where I had to jump around. I wasn't sure what direction I wanted to take the scales, so we're moving on to the belly right now and started off with a base coat of Vallejo model color English uniform, and to that, uh, I've added uh, Vallejo Model Color Yellow Ochre and a little bit of Vallejo Model Color Flat Yellow. And we're beginning the highlighting process right here. Next step, adding a little bit more Flat Yellow and working our way towards the edges of all the underbelly armor plates. And then for the final highlight, a little bit of Vallejo model color buff added, and that's applied just to the edges of all the plates.
the Badger Minotaur NB Green did uh, darken everything and I did lose some of the highlights so I wanted to go back and reapply some of those so uh, some of the areas where I thought it needed additional highlights uh, I applied some Scorpy Green and then on top of that I used Scorpy Green mixed with flat yellow and I not only put them on the areas that needed uh, additional highlights but just areas that I wanted to add a uh, break up the pattern essentially so like along the sides of the neck uh, I also added some lighter scales just to make things look a bit more interesting. And then to help blend those highlights in I once again applied this time by brush some of the Badger Minotaur Envy green color to help blend it in a little bit and still add that nice uh, glazed tone to the green. On to the wings now, and for that we are using Vallejo Model Color Flat Earth as the base coat. Step number two is a light dry brush of Vallejo Game Color Plague Brown. After the plague brown, we then dry brush again with Vallejo model color yellow ochre and dry brushing towards the center of each membrane. So uh, dark areas towards the digits and then center of the membranes get the higher highlights. And then final highlight, Vallejo model color yellow ochre mixed with a little bit of Vallejo model color beige, mostly operating towards the edges of all the membrane areas. I am highlighting a bit more than I normally do, over highlighting I should say, uh, because well we'll find out in the next step won't we. So the theme for this project I guess you can call heavy glazes. We already did the heavy glaze uh, for the scales with the Badger Minotaur Envy Green and even though that was a mistake uh, this one is intentional. I over highlighted the wings because I wanted to do a heavy glaze on them. Uh, the heavy glaze as you saw with the scales really ties all the colors together and adds a real nice richness and depth to the colors. So for the wings we are using a mix of Vallejo Game Color Sepia ink and Skin Tone ink and we are applying that it's just it's barely thinned uh, and applying it fairly heavily trying still try not to let it pool uh, if you notice I'm trying to clean it off the more raised areas of the wings uh, also the wings the top part of the wings have an odd texture to them on this miniature I am not entirely sure if it's intentional or not or if it's part of the uh, the sculpting process but they have a, a modeled appearance on the wings which I'm not sure how you get by sculpting it's more like little bits of green stuff have been you know repeatedly pushed onto um, a piece of metal which is often how they make wings very thin piece of brass or something like that so it's kind of interesting but I uh, wanted to highlight that with the washes as well and you can see it on that right side of the wings I think you can see that model pattern starting to come out and then the final thing to do, once the wash is dried, uh, go back with some Vallejo model color camo black brown, uh, somewhat thinned and applying that into the recesses uh, of each of the wings and feathering it out where necessary. Alright, on to all the spikes and the horns, and there's a lot on this miniature. Um, they also have the issue of they kind of just fade away, and trying to figure out how to paint that is a bit difficult. Uh, I ended up having to use the paint to extend the length of the spikes uh, further down the tail and further up the neck. Um, mainly down the tail, you can see in some of the future shots here where uh, some of the colors slowly fade out and just the highlight colors start going straight onto the green. Uh, but 
starting off with the scales, I, I blacked out most of the larger ones with uh, Vallejo game color, excuse me, Vallejo model color camo black brown. And to that, I am applying a Vallejo model color green brown. Um, I was initially thinking of trying to make them slightly green. The green brown's not that green, however, uh, there are a lot of spikes and I wanted different colors for them, so uh, it worked out, essentially. On to the green and brown, we then highlight with Vallejo model color beige. And beige has a slight green tinge to it. And you can see perfect shot right here while I was talking about a slowly uh, fading the highlight colors out further down to the tail without using that blocky uh, camel black brown outline around them. And so that helps kind of blend them in a bit better. Uh, having them stop abruptly uh, would look uh, a little strange, I believe. And then final highlight, Vallejo model color, pale sand, just the tips. Now for the second set of horns, I wanted them in obviously different color, but still kind of sticking towards that uh, same ivory horn color. Uh, for the second set, we are using a mix of Vallejo model color chocolate mixed with about 50% Vallejo model color English uniform. Next, to highlight that, we are using a mix of English uniform and Vallejo model color beige. And then final highlight color, the same mixture as before, but this time with more beige added. Throughout painting all the horns and the claws, uh, I'm using fairly quick steps here to speed up the painting process, but I'm trying to do my best to avoid brush strokes by applying thin layers, and then once that thin layer is applied, going back with a thicker layer and then highlighting again so the color becomes more opaque. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I prefer a standard palette rather than a wet palette because sometimes you want to let your paints dry out a little bit and become thicker. Uh, with a wet palette that's not really much of an option. And then for the third and final set of claws and in addition the teeth which were painted the same color, starting off with Vallejo Game Color Plague Brown. And then to that plague brown, we are adding some Vallejo model color beige to highlight. And then final highlight for the claws, a little bit of Vallejo model color pale sand added for the final highlights. Uh, for the teeth, I did do one additional highlight by adding in some white. The last bit to do was I went back to the scales and added a little bit more shading using some very thin Vallejo game color stormy blue. Uh, if you meant, remember I used a bit of blue in the initial dark wash over it and my intention was to add more blue into the model however you know sometimes plans you make don't always uh, happen the way you want them to. I did add a little bit more purplish blues to the mouth. Uh, and then this subtle amount of blue uh, helps hopefully to add to the scheme. It didn't add as much as I initially wanted. Um, when I did that initial wash, I probably could have added a bit more blue to it and make it a little bit more lighter, do a light blue wash over the whole thing and then a darker blue and black wash. But, um, you know, it adds a little bit more interesting bits in the model if you look closer and say, oh, there's a little bit of blue there. So hopefully that adds a bit more appeal to it. And with that, we are done with Narthrax. Had some mistakes with this model, which happens to everyone. Sometimes you have to start over again, but uh, they were fortunate mistakes in this case. Um, I was planning on, I know I said the NV Green step was a mistake. I was planning on adding a glaze 
over the green at some point, just not at that point. I was going to be using some of the uh, Badger Ghost Tints. Um, just so happens that the NB Green actually worked out a lot better. Uh, also, I was going to add more highlights before doing that step. But it, uh, it worked out. It has a really nice green color that I otherwise I wouldn't have figured out how to have done. Uh, so, again, yeah, sometimes uh, mistakes are a boon. Um, this is one of the definitely easier to build large miniatures from the Reaper Bones range. Uh, a lot of the multi-part models, they're just, because uh, they're multiple parts, you multiply the number of seam lines and s removing seam lines from bones is a pain in the ass. Uh, this one was actually pretty good. I didn't only had to spend like an hour cleaning up seam lines, which uh, sounds like a lot of time, but not when it comes to bones material. Uh, one last thing I will mention, if you watched the Cinder slash Ember Red Dragon video, you notice I talked about needing to reinforce the legs because the model was slowly bending over from the weight. I didn't think I would have to do it with this model. Turns out, yeah, you do. Uh, after putting it together and having it primed and sitting on my desk for a few days, he slowly started leaning over. Um, unfortunately, the legs position on this one uh, not as easy to pin. So what I ended up doing was pinning the tail to the wood base that I added to the miniature. And that's actually, it's putting tension on the rest of the miniature and holding it in position. So you wouldn't think it's holding it, but it actually, it is uh, just that small area where the, the tail touches the ground. But there we have it. Our Narthrex is all done. And then, uh, well, we'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching.